Good morning, Anne. How are you today? Okay, how are you? I'm very well, bright and early for me, late for you, later for you. <laughs> Whereabouts are you, Anne? In New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay, right. Seven o'clock here. Where? What time is it where you're at? 7 a.m. the next morning. Oh, okay. You're on Monday already. <laughs> yes, I'm already into Monday. I've had my Sunday sleep already and I'm oh. into Monday. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so it's bright and early, very dark, very cold. Um, but uh, yeah, that's part of life. So uh, yeah. Oh, we've got Charlotte joining us. Hi, Charlotte. Lovely to have you joining us as well. We've got quite a big, theoretically got quite a big class today of about 17, but we never know how many people will actually come in. Hi, welcome, Charlotte. Where are you from? Uh, you can just press your space bar. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. I'm from Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan. Okay. Lovely to have you in class with us. Uh, that is awesome uh, and we've got Mary who's joined us hi Mary welcome welcome to class as well um, I'm looking forward to hearing all the animal uh, all the birds in your particular areas because I have where I live a unique set of birds compared to um, the people in America. So uh, I'm hoping you're really going to enjoy. We, we are very fortunate. Uh, we do put up bird feeders where we are. And there is a little, I call it a forest in Australia. They call it a little reserve about 50 meters from my home. So a lot of birds are in there. And they, they found my... Um, I put up a big bell of seed and they found the bell of seed. So I have been very fortunate to have a really an amazing array of birds flying into my garden. Ah, here we go. There's Ruby connecting and Valentine connect, uh, connecting. Awesome. We are getting there uh, as everybody settles down for the evening. <laughs> oh, and what is that? That look, Charlotte. Let's see your little yeah, one. I have two of them. <laughs> My, mine haven't woken up yet. They are still fast asleep, uh, so they haven't woken up yet. I have two little French bulldogs. And um, they, they're curled up nice and warm in their, uh, their bed uh, at the moment. So they, they haven't come in. They may come in before the end of class. There'll be a rush as they, they come inside. So <laughs> my chair gets pushed as they arrive. All right. Oh, welcome, everybody. Ruby and Marguerite, lovely to have you. Excellent. Marguerite, where are you from? I'm from India. From India. Oh, beautiful. Well, it's a bit early in the morning, isn't it? It is. It is. Oh, it's going I, to... I'm not a very good sleeper sometimes, so ah. I get up early. <laughs> well, delighted to have you in class. Yeah, you're about three hours behind us, so that's how I know that it's early in the yes, morning we for you. Yeah, you're four thirty. And we're 7 a.m., so <laughs> yeah, you're just <laughs> behind us there. And Ruby, where are you from? Seattle, Washington. Uh, uh, Marguerite, sorry, you were from which uh, part of India? Veradu. Veradu, okay. I and Ruby? More than not, I'm mm -hmm. presently with my daughter because of this pandemic. Otherwise, I'm from Kolkata, which is in the east. In the east, okay. And Ruby, you're from Seattle, and right. uh, sorry, so yes, oh, great. And Valentine, 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 uh, sorry, there's nothing no worse than somebody mispronouncing your name. <laughs> no problem, people do it all the time. No problem. I'm from North Carolina, North Carolina, excellent. And Cynthia, where are you from? I'm from a little island off the coast of uh, northeast Florida. We have shorebirds and the backyard birds. 
Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing some photos of those. I'll explain <laughs> why I'm asking for photos a bit later. And Barbara, where are you from? Barbara's not chatting just yet. All right. Um, I tell you what, it's five minutes past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to share. Uh, and let's just find out what we are doing today. And hopefully everybody's got some birds that they are ready to share with us. Oh, lovely to see you, Cynthia. Lovely to see you in class two with us. Lovely to have all the cameras on. It really makes it so much nicer for us. Um, otherwise, you feel like a broadcaster or a TV presenter when you can't see the people you're chatting to. Today, we've got uh, Franklin with us. He's my TA. So anybody with any problems, he's available to help us with anything that might be uh, crop up for you. Thank you, Franklin, for being with us. Oh, uh, Franklin, can I become host, please, so that I can? Uh... You're already ah, the thank host. Thank you. Oh, it told me I was disabled. Okay, thanks. Let me just make you the co-host quickly. Um, yes, there we go. Now I can share my screen. Great. Uh, oh, lovely. There we go. Um, put on my, um, oops, too far. Right. We here in Australia are so fortunate because we have parrots. There are some of the most beautiful parrots that fly into the garden. Um, before, when I lived in South Africa, if you saw a parrot, you thought, oh, dear, who's lost a parrot? Now you see a parrot and it's quite, quite normal to see them. Uh, and so I will be showing you some of these magnificent parrots, just like this particular one called a collared parrot. And he's in my garden often and if the dogs come out he shouts at them and in fact uh the big bell uh, i put up a big bell of seed and the big bell was finished and we thought oh well we'll put it up later in the day the next thing there is this calling and calling and here are two of them sitting on the fence and they are calling to us to tell us to put up a new bell and they called and called until we put up the new bell and then they were quite happy we didn't hear and it was a different call to their normal call it was kind of telling us hey there's no food up here and we're hungry it was too sweet for words all right now, a little bit of housekeeping before we begin. We learn from each other, as you all know, and to have your cameras on is awesome. Uh, if you want a recording, you can always get it at helpitgetsetup.io. And those joining by live stream, you can't listen. You can listen, but you can't take part. So why not just register and join us in the classroom? And we're not paid to promote any product if we mention any. A little bit about me. My name is Sue. I live in Perth, Australia. I've been here for three years now. I moved from um, South Africa to Australia in order to look after the grandchildren and then promptly had grandchildren in South Africa that I haven't seen. So <laughs> just, that's just how life works. Um, the pandemic came and uh, I didn't get back to see them. So I'm granny in the phone for them. Um, I live here with my husband, Michael, who's also a guide. Um, we, I, I've been an educator for 40 Four years. But what I love about Get Set Up is I don't educate anymore. I share. I share ideas. I share thoughts. I share time with um, everybody in my, in my class. In, so it, for me, it's wonderful. And I have a great love of animals. That's why I did my animal series that we had at one stage. So let's have a look. Welcome to my garden. I don't have a big garden. In Australia, we don't have big gardens. But what we do have is a lot of parks and a lot of reserves where there's natural bush. And in front of me, I don't have a street. I have a little path and then it goes straight on to the park. So there's a beautiful park in front of me. And behind me, I've got this little forest reserve um, where we go for a walk with the dogs every day. Uh, so. 
it doesn't matter that our garden is not that big. But in this tiny garden, I've got four water features for the birds and animals because I have little animals that also come into the garden. Um, so I've got four, uh, one just outside the one window where my husband does his classes, one in the center, which is guarded by the wagtail, and then two on the floor when the wagtail is around. So everybody's able to have something to drink. I have little gnomes around my garden and my gnome welcomes us as you come out of the front door uh, into this into our little garden. So please enjoy time in my garden. As you can see, I've got a bird feeder there and it's empty just at the moment. It's got seed at the bottom, but I normally put a big bell in there of seed and that is what the first time I put it up, within three minutes, I had parrots in my garden. So it was quite amazing how they knew. I have no idea. Right. So let's see. What kind of birds do you have in your gardens? Who's going to tell me what they've got in their garden? Charlotte, what have you got in your garden? I have recently, the last three nights, I've had a cardinal visit me. Nice. They're beautiful. Um, yeah, they are. I have bluebirds that are, I have a nest in a little birdhouse that I have in my backyard. And I have, I don't, they're not gold finches, but they're finches. And I don't know what kind they are. They're gray. They're the gray finches. And I have, um, the smaller woodpeckers, and I don't know the name of them because I can never get it right. It starts with a P and they're smaller woodpeckers. But there are all sorts of things around here. Um, wow. We have Oreos. Wow. We have, uh, what are they, yellow sap suckers. We have kingpin birds. I, just lots of birds. Wow, you are so fortunate to have so many different birds around. You don't realize it until you have them or until you're not there, just how many birds you actually see and then you miss them and you realize, wow, I, I have had, I have got beautiful things around me. Marguerite, what is around you in India? Uh, well, in my garden. In my back garden, we have three ducks, and we have two hens, and we have a rooster, and <clears throat> the birds which fly, well, we have miners, we have parrots, but they're not like yours. They're full green with the red beak, uh, plenty of them flying around. Uh, then we have the seven sisters, the noisy ones, the fat brown ones. They're always seven, usually together, seven sisters. Um, we had peacocks recently. Ooh, loud, uh, yes. <laughs> very loud. Yes, when my when I was in Jaipur, they really this, the peacocks over here. We saw them in the trees. Now, if you look at my background, that is my lawn. So we are surrounded literally by a forest. Wow! Because the the house is placed in a forest area. You see, so we get a lot of birds coming in. We get the hoopoe. Uh huh. You know, and yeah. then, uh, I don't know, there's a little black bird, you know, I don't know what it is, which has, when it lifts its wings, it has white. Then we get the drongo. Mm -hmm. Those are wow, so birds. you've also yeah. got a lovely variety of, of birds in your garden. And Cynthia, what have you got in your garden? Oh, just unmute, if you've just pressed your space bar. Um, well, for the past couple of years, on the block next to us, there's an eagle's nest. And so the eagles fly over quite a bit. You can tell them, see them up in the sky by the white head. And wow. then we have, um, we don't have any parrots, anything that colorful, but we do. What we're proud of is a painted bunting. It's a little bird, a little smaller than a robin. Um, with three or four colors on such a tiny little bird. Wow. And then 
We have a, um, a lot of little birds that I've asked the birders around here what they are. My best guess is they're kinglets, little, little tiny birds. They're smaller than Carolina wrens or anything like that. And some of them have yellow breast and some have red breast. But anyway, I'm still looking for a name for those. Okay, wow. So you've got an interest in something to look for and find. And Anne, what have you got? Oh, you're on mute at the moment. You press your space bar. Yeah, there we go. And we have cardinals and bluebirds. <laughs> and yesterday I saw a flicker. Nice. Um, I've seen bluebirds and uh, yesterday around the, the bay, because we live near the, um, the shore, I saw a red-winged blackbird. Wow. And at the shore, there's seagulls, of course. <laughs> always always yeah. we're on the coast as well so yes, yes. um they, they are there too right yes. okay all right uh, and sue what have you got sue's not going to tell us at the moment ruby what have you got well the reason i joined this class is because i need your help when, you know, I left Seattle, we had robins and we had a lot of birds. Then I lived in Georgia for 30 years. I had bluebirds, cardinals, chickadees, a lot of different stuff. Now I'm back home to Seattle and all we have is crows. And so there, I, I think the birds are scared of them. They are. Because I, I put a feeder out for two years and nothing. Uh, but they are frightened of the crows. Um, I quite agree with you there. They are frightened of the crows. Um, you need to, if, if you can, put a feeder that is protected from the crows um, in a way. And, and also what you need to do is you need to make it very well, well known to the crows that they, they're not welcome in your garden. You shoo them away. Um, I had an experience in South Africa, a very beautiful experience with some owls. Uh, there was a two eagle owls that lived in the tree um, I lived between two cities so we were almost rural but not rural it was in a, a city called uh, Midrand it was midway between two cities um, but uh, every morning the crows would come and disturb the owls and I got tired of this so I used to go out and I'd shout at the crows and then the owl started talking to me. He would hoot every morning when I went out, he'd hoot. And if I didn't answer him, he would fly low over my head to prove that he's <laughs> actually there. And people laughed, but they couldn't believe that the rapport that I got with this owl because I was constantly chasing the crows. Mm -hmm. And eventually, as the crows saw me, they were gone. And a lot of animal, uh, birds started to return because the crows then chose another spot to go and spend oh, their time. Okay. So okay. maybe try that because when the, the owls had a, a nest, uh, they put up an owl box and they had little babies and one baby fell out of the nest and they allowed me to pick it up and put it back up in the nest and they still loved it and they chatted to me while I was doing it. And so I had that was the one thing I really was sorry to leave when I left South Africa was mm -hmm. to leave my two owls. In fact, there were four by the time I left because the oh. two babies had grown up. But uh, really, really special. In fact, in my class that I do tomorrow called Encounters with Wildlife, there's actually pictures of the owls. I've included it in with my Encounters of Wildlife. Wow. Um, I've, I've had interesting encounters in Africa because living in South Africa for 63 years, I did quite a lot of time in the bush. Yeah. And I had some close encounters and some fun encounters with animals. And that's what I talk about tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, and Valen Valentine, what have you got in your garden? Uh, Valentine's not chatting at the moment. Uh, everybody are, are welcome to just keep um, chatting as we go along. I'm going to continue continue, oopsie, share. I'm going to continue. As I said before, these are 
almost permanently in the garden. They've got their baby now, and now they're three. There were two, now they're three. It's like the little bandicoot, which is a, a distant relative of the the kangaroo, but it's very much smaller, also a marsupial. And he came in and then his wife came in and now they're three. So <laughs> we have the whole families of, of animals joining us in our garden. Now, here are just three of the parrots that come into my garden. You've got the the one with the collar. It's called the collared parrot, uh, the Australian ring neck parrot, actually. And it's got this bright yellow ring around its neck. And, and they're quite big birds with their tail. They, they're a fair sized bird. And then we've got the red capped parrot. And he almost looks as if he should be the rainbow parrot, but they're even brighter. And the red cap parrot has this beautiful red head, uh, yellow neck, blue on the wings, red under the bum, gray front. And they are a little shyer than the um, uh, ringed, ring-necked parrots. They, if we come outside, they will go and sit in the tree nearby, but uh, not not the collared ones. They they couldn't worry. We can walk right up to them. Um, and then they'll sort of decide whether they think they should fly or not. And then we were, are very fortunate to get a parrot called um, the Carnaby Black Cockatoo. And they are mainly on the East Coast. But we have this a group of them on the West Coast, and they come into our whenever the bottle brush is out, then they come and you know they've been if you haven't heard them or seen them, because they break off the heads and you end up with this carpet of red on the floor. Um, so they're quite destructive with what they do, but they are really beautiful. But they are dwindling in number because they love to uh, in their pairs they go for 100 year old trees that's their favorite place to make a nest now there are plenty of 100 year old trees but they are dwindling because we are, are expanding and putting more and more houses in and so their habitat is dwindling but one of the nice things here in Australia is that every suburb has a an area that is still bush they call it a reserve, and there's a reserve in each um, a suburb of, of Perth. So you always get to see um, the – so there is place for them where they haven't destroyed the habitat. Um, in fact, it was very funny. I was talking about Perth a couple of weeks ago, and somebody said, I know nothing about Perth. Won't you talk about Perth? So I asked my bosses, and they will live on the east. They say, we know nothing about Perth. Yes. So I think it's Friday morning, uh, Thursday night for you. I'm going to be talking about Perth and showing you some of the beautiful places that we have here in Perth. So let's continue. Now, we also have smaller birds. We have the big ones, and then we have smaller ones. We have this very beautiful one with a little yellow patch, and that's called a New Holland Honey Eater. And they come in up to 20 of them at a time, and they sit around the bird bath. They all take turns from one from this side, then one from this side, then one from this side, then one from this side. And they sit and chirp at each other while they're all having their bars. And then along comes a little wagtail. That's the black one with the white front. And he doesn't like them bathing in what he regards as his bird bath. So he gets very annoyed with them there and he flies and he clucks and he makes all sorts of noises, but they've learned to ignore him and they finish their bath and then off they go, sit on the fence and then they're gone. And then during the day, they play in the garden. They zoom in and zoom out and chase each other and dive bomb. And they have so much fun. You can just sit and watch them. Often when uh, Michael's not teaching, he'll go and sit on the veranda outside and uh, patio, they call it here, um, and watch the birds as they fly. And they they are totally happy with us sitting very close to them because, as you can see, we don't have a large garden. We also have a little fairy wren and well two of them and they are this beautiful blue color 
And they come and they peck on the window. So you hear this tapping on the window and then they sit on the chairs and watch us through the window and then tap on the window. I think they're seeing their reflection, but it's just too sweet. And they are really small. They are little, little animals. They're really beautiful little birds. We also get the raven, as I call it a crow, because it was always a crow in my, but he's not allowed to stay for long. I, I see him, he gets sent out of my garden, because I don't want him chasing all the little birds that do live in my garden. And then lastly, we had a magpie in the garden. It's a juvenile, but you don't normally get magpies in the garden. They don't no, I've never seen them in people's gardens, although I don't know that many gardens other than my own. But this little, uh, I actually didn't know what it was. But fortunately, on your phone in Google, there's an app where you can press and it, it tells you what you're looking at. And so I found out that I was looking at a juvenile magpie. He'd also come to join us for some time and have something to drink from the bird bath. And then he was on his way. And just recently, some we don't see pigeons very often, but recently two rock pigeons have joined us in the garden. I haven't put their photo up yet because it was only two days ago that they decided to come and join us. And they, they're on the ground with the bandicoot. So when you look out the window, there's the little bandicoots eating, there's the pigeons eating, they're down on the ground level, and you look up at the bird feeder, and there's one or other of the parrots up there busy feeding. So every time you look out, there's always some really awesome birds in our garden. So we are we very, very lucky. Um, we, as soon as we took down the blackberry, the, the crow disappeared. He obviously found he liked the, the uh, but that was growing just too, too big. So we took it down and put up baskets instead. And the birds love the baskets because they sit on the baskets. And then from there, they fly to wherever they want to go. So they feel that it's um, a kind of a, a good vibe garden. Um, but we also do get um, in the forest, and they sometimes do come into our garden, we get the rainbow lorikeet. Now, now you can see why it's called rainbow, because yeah. it's got a red mouth, a blue face, a green back, yellow front. It's just a rainbow and riot of color. And when it flies, it looks like this multicolor thing that's flying through the air. So it really is awesome to see him as he flies. Um, he has never come into the garden yet, but we have seen him in the forest. Um, and then the other day, a hawk came into our garden. It dived into the garden, grabbed, I presume, a lizard from the grass and was gone. Now, for me, the size of my garden wasn't big enough to take a hawk, but this enormous hawk just landed and was gone. And what is so interesting, it makes a mewing sound. And when you hear that sound, there isn't one sound in the forest. Not a single bird peeps. And it's like you're in, in a morgue. You'll be in the forest, you hear the mew, because now you've been hearing the chatter of all the birds, particularly early morning or late afternoon. And suddenly you hear a mew and there's nothing. You're walking through this dead, silent area. And until you hear that mew disappearing into the distance, then all the birds start to chatter again. So they are terrified of him and they just there isn't a sound we have our rock pigeons and then we are so so fortunate often through my window I hear the um, kookaburra the laughing kookaburra now you cannot miss the sound of this bird and at the end of the lesson um or class I should say I'm so used to calling things lessons I will play you the sound of the laughing kookaburra it is a sound that I have never heard before and you will never hear it again because it is so different it actually laughs from the bottom of its belly and you can hear it and when you get two of them they are laughing together and there is there is a pair 
and they come into the, the reserve and through my window, I can hear them laughing. And they are, if I'm not teaching at that time, I head off into the reserve because I love seeing them and I love hearing them. They are just too gorgeous for words. They really are amazing. Now, um, who said they were living on an island just off the coast? Somebody said they were living on an island. They had so many birds. Cynthia? I, I, I live on an island, but I don't know as much as you do about birds. <laughs> oh, tell me about your birds that are on your island. Um, well, l let's see. Behind us is a, a river, the backside of the island, and we get um, ducks there in the wintertime. And um, then mostly the yard birds will be the cardinals. Um, strange that we don't have robins here. Every place else I've lived in the Southeast US, we've just had tons of robins, but not here. We're not on one of the flyways. I think the flyways go across, go from Canada across the Gulf down to Mexico and all. So we're a little bit off of that. But um, a lot of shorebirds, of course, stay here all, all year round. Um, all kinds of gulls and things like that. But, but I'm a beginner. I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, we all begin and learn. I, I loved birds when I, I actually learned learned to love birds. I used to go in South Africa to the game reserve to see the animals. But often you could drive for a long time and see nothing because they would be hidden in the bush. And so we started looking at the birds because you could see the birds. So with that, that was where the interest in birds started. And uh, so when we came across birds, we had a bird book with us and we would tick off the different birds that we saw. And then when I came to, uh, when I came to Australia. Uh, Michael knew that I had, he'd seen, um, because we've, we've only been together for seven years now, I think it is. Uh, he saw that I had an interest in birds when we lived in South Africa. So the first present he bought me was an Australian bird book. And so mm -hmm. I was able to continue with my interest in birds and be able to, to keep uh, going with my birds. So I really, um, do enjoy looking at them. I do enjoy, I still have, in, in South Africa, we used to have what we called the LBJ, the little brown job, because you really couldn't tell which one it was. They all looked pretty similar. And unless you were a, a twitcher, you did not know um, the, the different ones. And I'm certainly not a twitcher. I'm uh, uh, just uh, very much an amateur birder. I just love what I find in my own garden. All right. Who else has got birds that they haven't told me about yet in their gardens? Ruby. Uh, did you say Ruby? Yes, I did. Oh, the, uh, the only ones I have is the chickadees and the crows that I mm -hmm. told you about that scares yep. everything else. Now, just go and tell the crow. The crows recognize you. They've got it. They're very bright birds, surprisingly heard. enough. And so if they know that you're going to chase them every time they come into your garden, they push off and they find somebody else's garden because they get tired of being moaned at. <laughs> they moan and you moan back. So <laughs> they, they get the they get the, the hint eventually and then they just in fact, as I stepped out of the front door, the crows would be gone. Um and the, the owls would say thank you very much. So, um, yeah, it, it's they do get somebody, the message. Somebody said that the crows remember you if you're mean to them and they'll come after you. Is that true? Well, the magpie does that. Um, but the crows have never came after me. They would see me and I, would, I, I was very polite to them. I, I told them that they, they just 
were, were irritating the owls and I didn't like that. And could they find somebody else to irritate? I, I never really, I didn't throw stones at them or anything like that, but I, I told them really nicely that really they were not welcome in my garden and there are plenty of other beautiful gardens to go and spend their time in. And slowly but surely they did go off. They would come back occasionally. And as I stepped out the door, you could see them sort of look at me and go, oh, she's here. And then they would go. So they never actually were mean to me, but I, I was never physically mean. But if you do hurt them, like the magpie, mm -hmm. if you hurt a magpie, they will, they will go for you. Um, they'll find you in a crowd of people and come and wow. dive bomb you. <laughs> so, but uh, they, I'll tell you about them just now. They, they, they're usually very placid birds, except during uh, the season when there are eggs or babies. Then, uh, <laughs> then, then humans are fair game for the. Uh, <laughs> all right. And Mary, what have you got in your garden? Well, um, I want to learn how to identify the birds. I, I have an app for that, but I don't think it's right. I know I have cardinals. I heard an owl the other night. I live on a lake, so I have all kinds of birds and they make all kinds of sounds and I don't know. I think I need some binoculars also. Yeah. But um, we did have a, a red-shouldered hawk on our fence one day. Mm -hmm. um, and we have geese, but... How do I start to recognize birds? Look and I, listen. Look and listen, but I also got um, in South Africa and here um, books um, uh, that give you the birds by color. Oh. So you can get the birds by whatever they are, uh, okay. birds of prey, ducks, etc. But you can also get birds by color. So if you see a, the color of the bird, you have less birds to look through in that whole bird book if you've only uh -huh. got the color oh. to look for. Um, and they in each country, there's somebody different who does it, um, that is a birder, that does it by, by color. So try and find the book where it's the birds by color. It okay. definitely helps. Um, there was Newman in South Africa and there's a different person here in Australia um, and then you've got your birds by color and that definitely helps and then from there if you think you found the bird you can always go online and you can get the bird sound you can put the name of the bird in okay. and put the sound and then you can right. listen to the sound and go oh yeah that's what I'll be listening to All right. Thank and, you. and that way you can you can get to know your birds as well it's just a, another way of doing it yeah. Um, particularly when there are a lot of similar birds or something like that. Uh, and then you can learn their, their different sounds. I'm slowly learning. It's taking me time, which when I hear the call, I think, okay, that is the gala or that is uh -huh. the um, ringneck or that's the red cap. He's got a much lighter sound. The little ones, they tweet and I can't tell which tweet is what uh -huh. tweet. There are too many tweets <laughs> for me. Uh, but yes, it, it's, a, it's a good way of doing it um, and finding out um, your birds. But go, go start with color first okay. and then uh, work from there. I do have hummingbirds also. I need to put oh, wow. fresh nectar out for them. I can wow. see them uh, from my bedroom window. I have glass mm. doors and I like to wake up in the morning and hear the birds and uh, see a cardinal mm. come and eat some of the seed and I go, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> it is when the birds are around it's always that when you hear that sound it just lifts your spirit regardless yeah. of how you're feeling for the day you can be feeling really down and then you hear these beautiful sounds and you go the world is actually good the world <laughs> is good I might not think it is at the moment but the world is good and it just lifts your spirit and makes you a little bit happier than you were before yeah because so, we all have our up days and we all have our very down days as well so that's how how life goes particularly as we get older right uh anybody else Marlene Yes, um, Sue, I live in Florida mm -hmm. and um, we have, um, I don't, I don't know what they're all called, honestly. I mean, I, I have a, birds, but I don't know what they're all called. We have cardinals and we have blue jays. 
-hmm. and we have um, doves mm -hmm. and um, some kind of little brown bird that I LBJ. I, yeah, <laughs> Call us an LBJ. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. Um, we have mockingbirds and um, beautiful woodpeckers, mm -hmm. and um, and we do have um, have parrots also. Um, what, what I have seen in my yard is a larger green parrot. Um, that has like some black on its head. Um, that's the only two colors that I've seen on it. And um, so, but I, you know, so I, I'm I'm go I'm going to work on learning to identify these. That's my goal. <laughs> oh, that's that is awesome. But yeah, learning and and doing as you go along, it it really does make it so interesting. As as you and when you can identify, you go yeah. Oh, that's another one. I know that one. I, I just, and... I just love seeing them in my backyard. I mean, I, I just, you know, I love sitting out in the backyard and watching them. I, I put the bird feeder up at the beginning of the pandemic when we were all, you know, staying home, and, um, and it's, it's something I, I truly have enjoyed, you know, having, um, you know, have having them there. So. <laughs> they, they are a joy and they are fun to watch and they they all have unique uh, characters of their own in south africa we had um barbets um which are like little woodpeckers and they the, there's one called a black collared one it's got a black collar around its neck and they they ho hollow out your tree and they live in the hollow in the tree and they chose a branch right outside my bedroom window and they hollowed out an area of about that long and five of them lived in there and every wow. night you'd see them go there was a hole at one end and a hole at the other end and they would fly in from the one end and then they would pack in one mm -hmm. behind the other. One, two, three, four, five. And they were in for the night. And then in the morning, they would come out the other side. One, two, three, four, five. And it was, I think the one in the middle got suffocated every night. But they would go in and come out. And it was a nightly and, and daily ritual. And I would watch for this ritual as they were heading to bed in the evening. Didn't always Always catch them in the morning because I was getting ready for school but if I did it over the weekends it was awesome to see them coming out of their little holes <laughs> so it, it was it was great uh, the only problem with that was bees would often come and take over those holes and kill the barbets that was living in it and that I didn't like mm -hmm. uh, as much as I like bees and I know that bees are so good for us and we need the bees I didn't like the fact that they killed other animals so for me, that that I found quite hard. Um, so, but other, it only happened twice. But that was twice too many times, as far as I was concerned. You don't hurt other animals if you can help it. Anyway, anybody else got something they'd like to say before we continue? Uh, mm -hmm. I'd just like to say, don't encourage the pigeons. No. <laughs> No, they take over. No, we no, don't. Because uh, my husband, you, you can develop a fungal infection from them. Uh -huh. you see? Yes, yes. You're and quite he got right. it. And it's very difficult to uh, find out what it is, really. And the, the treatment is very prolonged. Um, then he also had a heart condition. And because of that, he couldn't, because of this fungal infection, it couldn't be operated. And he passed away, wow. so that it they should not be encouraged. Yeah, no, I agree with you. They live in the forest. Um, yeah. I, we will watch that very definitely as we go along. Now, in front of us, we have a park. So we have birds in the park. We have birds in the garden. We have birds in the forest. So. I, I chose this particular home exactly for that. Uh, so let's go around the edges and have a look. The one with the pink front is called a gala. Uh, he's a little parrot. Um, he's gray on the top, pink. And they usually in flocks of about 50. And they really enjoy flying around. And they, when they settle in the evening, the branches of the trees really take strain with all of them sitting on it. Um, but they, they are too sweet. And they're not scared of people. There's a, a group of them that live, a flock of them that lives next to the school nearby. And they really couldn't worry about the children running in between them. They just continue eating. If the children try and chase them, then they move off. But otherwise, they, they're quite happy to be around. Uh, 
And then we've got this beautiful one called a musk lorikeet. He's mainly green with yellow and then yeah. just a little bit of red on his front. Um, at the top, we've got, again, our Carnaby's black cockatoo. He's got his, his head up. I love it when they put their head up. They look completely different. You've kind of got to look again and go, is that the same bird I was looking at just now when he puts his head up? They are absolutely gorgeous. And then you've got the magpie. Now, the magpie is, has a very sharp beak. And he's a very placid bird, unless it is the time of the eggs and the babies. Then they will attack people. They, particularly cyclists, because cyclists have helmets on and the, the helmet skinkles in the sun. And they like things that shine. So they come and they dive bomb the helmets. They are a total, and it's not everyone. You get rogue ones. We call them rogue ones that, that do it. Not every um, magpie does it. But you do, during that season, we see on the news, be careful magpie season. Be careful magpie season. Because they can, and of course, your eyes are shiny. So if a magpie comes near, close your eyes. Because they, were, they have been known to go for eyes because eyes shine. So... Uh, and they have hurt people along the way. So you do have to be careful of them during that time. And then we get two types of white cockatoo. We get the beautiful one that is the sulfur crested, uh, sulfur crested one. And then we get the, the other one um, that is called a little uh, corella, corella, co coella. C-O-E-L-L-A. The little koala, he's got gray eyes. And they are in flocks of up to 50. And they come and they'll come and feed it in early evening. And the, the lawn of the park is just white. And then uh, they won't be there every day. They'll be there for a couple of days. Then they're gone. They've obviously gone to another park. And then they go around the bus and then they come back again to your park. So you have them going backwards and forwards around and, and we're able to, to see them. So it's really, really beautiful to see them coming down and feeding and eating um, where they are but they're really beautiful birds we we are so fortunate we've got the little ones but we've also got these magnificent um cockatoos and um parrots and parakeets so we've we've really got a variety here in australia and as i said before in south africa if you saw one you went oh dear it's escaped who's it escaped from yeah it's they're not in cages at all they are free to fly wherever they like but when it is the time of the bottle brush we see a lot more birds they all love whatever the bottle brush has, the, the nectar of the bottle brush flowers, because they, and what's so interesting is different things flower at different times right through the year. So the birds have got something to eat the whole year. Mm -hmm. Every time one thing is about to finish, something else comes into flower. And so we've got uh, in the, the uh, forest and in the park, it's all natural bush. They plant natural bush there. So they are all the natural plants that these birds are used to eating. So it really is great. Now, before I go to thanks, what I want to do is I want to play for you the sound of the, um, let me find it for you. Where's he gone? Oh, where's he gone? Hold on a second. I seem to have lost. Oh, I know why I've lost him. Hold on. I had to click on something else while I was waiting. Kookaburra. There we go. Uh, make that small now. Now I can share it. Um, yeah, there he is. Right. I want to share the kookaburra with you. Oh, sorry. I've got to stop sharing because I've got to allow you to hear. Otherwise, you don't hear the sound. Uh, share. Right, let's go with the sound of the kookaburra. Can you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> 
right. Yeah. So cool. this is such an unusual sound. You and when they are there, two of them, and they are talking to each other, you can't help but smile as they they make their and they they stop and then they start again and it just is a continuous thing of them laughing and as soon as you hear that sort of almost goggle sound you know oh, the kookaburra is back and then you can hear the kookaburra calling so he really is special uh, as a, a wonderful little bird to have around as kids we learned a song about kookaburras yes you do did I think everybody we did too in South Africa we learned about the kookaburra yeah. but I never knew what sound it made until I yeah I never it. saw it until today oh well now you know what you were now singing I about know. yes oh, fantastic all right well thank you everyone I hope you enjoyed learning about the birds in my backyard I certainly enjoyed learning about yours and if it you was have a lot of fun Good. If you have fun, I enjoyed it. Great, Ruby. Uh, if you've got pictures, please send them to Liz at Get Set Up. She will send them to me, and I'm going to make a wall of all the pictures that people have sent me of birds from their gardens. Uh, and so we will be able to do them. Um, just some related classes I do. I do encounters with wildlife. I do fairy and gnomes in my garden. Uh, how to make your either from this size fairy garden up to a whole lot of different ones in your garden, even using trees around your garden. Uh, we also do, I do trivia. This week's trivia is the 60s, games night, uh, school day memories, road trips, welcome to Perth. There are 11 different classes available every week um, and they change all the time. So hopefully I will be able to see some of you in some of the other classes that we have. I will send you uh, a little email and you can see where to, if you want to get your recording, some idea of some of the other classes that are available. And if you've got ideas for new classes, because um, I, I'm starting to wonder what else would people like to hear about. So if you have got ideas for classes, please feel free to add those to the classes at the bottom there and what else you'd like to learn. Um, it gives us an idea that we are going in the right direction. You've now got a new feature where you can invite a friend to join you in a class, which is awesome because you can chat about it afterwards. And uh, anything you want to know, anything you want to find out about, help at Get Set Up is your first port of call. Right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin, for being Thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I, I didn't have a lot to say, but I Thank enjoyed you, the class. Just to listen about the different birds. Well, that's Thank awesome. You so Thank you. No, it was a pleasure, Valentine. Lovely to have you in class with us. Uh, Thank awesome, you. everybody. Thank you very much for sharing time with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, lovely, Sue. Nice to see you again. That's awesome. Ah, excellent. Uh, and thank you for having your cameras on, most of you. It really helped a lot. I understand when people don't want their cameras on as well, but you have taken part. So that's still there's interaction there. Yeah, and I do appreciate that. Yeah, so I move around a lot. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> thank you very much. Enjoy you, your evening. And Marguerite, enjoy your day. <laughs> thank you, Sue. It thank was you. fun. <laughs> and I thank look you. forward to maybe seeing you again. Bye, everyone. Bye.